Hello, and thanks for watching. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to share a technique for modeling uh, property tax abatements in real estate. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about how to address uh, property tax abatements when uh, calculating direct capitalization value, as well as when you're uh, running some DCF analysis and, and how to treat that uh, tax abatement uh, in your residual value. So first you'll find uh, here, I have created just a, a quick template. At the bottom, I have two worksheets, a direct cap worksheet, where I walk through the technique for your direct, direct cap valuation. Then I have a DCF worksheet, where, where I'll show you how uh, I model out the DCF for with uh, the property tax abatement included. So first to the direct cap. So the, the technique is as follows. Uh, you'll first set the property tax amount in your direct cap pro forma to market property tax, such that you arrive at what we might call an adjusted net operating income. And what I mean by that is imagine here we have an actual pro forma. And so in, let's say our year one, we expect roughly 10 million in gross revenue, uh, subtract out, call it 5% vacancy, and we arrive at an effective gross revenue of 9.5 million. And then we have some common area maintenance expenses, some insurance expenses. And then we have what we expect to be the actual property tax bill in this year one. And that happens to be 50% of what we expect market property tax to be. And that in this particular case, again, it's purely hypothetical, is that a 1% mill rate on a $95 million assessed value arrives at a market property tax of 950,000. And the city or, or taxing jurisdiction has agreed to abate uh, that tax 50% over a 15 year period, such that in year one and each year subsequent to that, the actual property tax amount will be 50% of market. And so this is our actual pro forma. We arrive at total operating expenses of 3.225 million and an NOI of uh, 6275. Now the challenge is, uh, or, or what you may be tempted to do is take this and net operating income, cap it at some cap rate to arrive at a gross market value, even possibly what you pay for the property. And if you were to do that, you'd overpay. Uh, just as an example, Let's imagine that we used a 6% cap rate and you were to take that net operating income inclusive of the tax abatement and you were to cap that NOI at say a six cap rate. It gives you a value of 104 million, almost $105 million. Now, how you should handle this is, is you take the same pro forma only under property tax rather than using the abated property tax, you use the full market property tax and you arrive at, again, what we're calling an adjusted net operating income. This is the actual net operating income minus uh, whatever a, a property tax amount was abated. We then cap that value at some market cap rate, we'll say in this case, 6%, and we arrive at a gross market value of 96.6 million, quite a bit short of that 104 and a half, almost $105 million value. However, there is still value in the abatement uh, over the, the hold period, right? If we were acquiring this property, we have 15 years worth of abatement. And so out here to the right, I've done just some calculation on what that abatement might look like. And then I performed a calculation in terms of what the value of that abatement would be. So again, we're talking 50% abatement over a 15 year period. We use an assumption, let's say a 3% tax growth rate. Year one, we're saying market tax is 950,000. That grows by 3% a year. And this row reflects what we forecast the property taxes on a market basis would be. Then in this row, we're calculating the abatement. Uh, and so this is 50%, if you look at the formula, 50% of the market tax rate. I then do a, a, a present value calculation in Excel using a 6% discount rate. And I just matched the discount rate to uh, the NOI cap rate that we use in our valuation. 
using that discount rate, discounting back all of those future abatements to today at that 6% discount rate gives us a value for this 15 year abatement of called five and a half million. Coming back to our valuation then, we take that gross market value, we add back in the value of the abatement, and we arrive at an adjusted market value of 102.2 million. Again, several million short of where we would be had we simply capped the um, abated net operating income, but at a value that's more realistic. And so that's modeling a tax abatement uh, when handling your direct cap valuation. Now, what about when we're when you're running a DCF? All right. So in your DCF here below, uh, we're calculating, really we're solving for an unlevered internal rate of return and an unlevered equity multiple. Well, what we do is uh, we run the DCF over, let's say a, we're doing a 10 year analysis. We'll run it over 10 years. And the property tax amount we use is the actual, what we expect uh, the property tax to be after accounting for the abatement. However, our residual value, rather than using the, prop, the, uh, the property tax inclusive of that abatement, we mark the property tax to market. And similar to how we did the direct cap valuation uh, previously, uh, and off, off here to the right, you see there's the residual value net operating income without the abatement. We have some exit cap rate to arrive again at a gross residual value uh, exclusive of the abatement. And then we add back in the present value of any remaining abatement payments. And you see that here, if you look at the formula, what I'm simply doing is I'm taking the abatement in years 11 through 15, discounting that back at, at the discount rate. And it values the abatement in years 11 through 15 at 2.8 million. We add that to uh, that gross residual value and that arrives or gets us to an adjusted residual value of 109.7 uh, million. And again, this is less than uh, had we just simply, for instance, uh, just capped the NOI inclusive of the abatement, 116.76 million versus 109 million. Uh, quite a bit different. In fact, if you come back and you were to do this, right? So our return uh, using this proper analysis is 7.46%. Had we just, again, used that amount, 8.11%, which is wrong. And so we would have overvalued uh, the, the property expected either to pay more or uh, anticipated a higher return than what we'll actually get. And so with that, that's modeling property tax abatements in real estate. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, this is a follow on to a, a question we had in our ACRE accelerator. Uh, but certainly if you have questions about this technique, uh, please let me know and uh, thanks for your time.